Hello everybody. Today. We are going to discuss about irrigation canals. This presentation is prepared by. Anise K. Assistant Professor. Department of Civil Engineering. MEA, Engineering, College, Parenthal Mana. The topics we discuss today are. Basic ideas about canals. Classification of canals. General considerations regarding alignment of canal. Cross section of canal. And finally. Components of a canal. A canal is an artificial channel, generally it is in trapezoidal shape. Canals are constructed on the ground to carry water to the fields either from the river or from a tank or reservoir. Canal can be classified based on. Nature of source of supply. Financial output. Function of the canal. Boundary surface of the canal. Discharge and the relative importance in a given network of canals. Presence of lining. Alignment of canal. Classification based on nature of source of supply. Based on the nature of supply. Canals can be classified into two types. Permanent canal. A canal is said to be permanent when it is fed by a permanent source of supply. Permanent canal is further classified in two as Perennial canal, have flow throughout the year. Non-perennial canal, have flow only in few months of year. Inundation canal, this type of canals have no permanent source of supply. This type of canals are used to dissipate the flood water. Classification based on financial output. Based on the financial output, canals are classified into two as Productive canal, canal which yields a net revenue to the nation after full development of irrigation in the area. Protective canal Is a type of relief work constructed with the idea of protecting a particular area from famine. Classification based on function of the canal Based on the function Canals can be classified into five types. Irrigation canal. Are the canal carrying water to agricultural fields? Carrier canal. Besides doing irrigation, carries water for another canal. Feeder canal. Are constructed to feed two or more canals. Navigation canals. Are used for navigation purposes. Power canal. Used to carry water for power generation. Classification based on boundary surface of the canal. Based on the boundary surface, canals are classified into three as Alluvial canal. Are the canals excavated in alluvial soils such as silt? Non-alluvial canal. Canals excavated in non-alluvial soils such as loam, clay, hard soil, rock etc. Rigid boundary canal. Canals having rigid sides and rigid base such as lined canals. Based on discharge and the relative importance in a given network, canals are classified into five types. Main canal. Are the canal carrying huge quantity of water directly from river or reservoir? Branch canal. They are the branches of main canal in either direction taking off at regular intervals. Usually carries a discharge greater than 5 cumix. Major distributary. Canals taking off from a branch canal and carrying less discharge than branch canal. Usually carries a discharge in the range of 0.25 to 5 cumix. Minor distributary. Canals taking off from major distributary which usually carries a discharge less than 0.25 cumix. Watercourse. A small channel which ultimately feeds the water to irrigation fields. This diagram shows the layout of different types of irrigation canals in a network, main canals, branch canal, major and minor distributories are shown in the diagram. Classification based on the presence of lining. They are of two types such as Lined canal, the can in sheesh lining of impervious material is provided on its bed and banks to prevent the seepage of water. Different types of lining materials used are concrete, brick or burnt clay tile, boulder, etc. Unlined canal are the canal in which bed and banks made up of natural soil. High seepage and conveyance water losses are present in them. Classification based on alignment of the canal. 
They are ridge canal, contour canal, side slope canal. The figure shows positioning of different types of canals based on the alignment. Ridge canal. The dividing ridge line between the catchment areas of two streams is called the watershed. The canal which is aligned along any natural watershed slash ridge line is called a watershed canal, or a ridge canal. Aligning a canal on the ridge ensures gravity irrigation on both sides of the canal. Since the drainage flows away from the ridge, no drainage can cross a canal aligned on the ridge. Thus, a canal aligned on the watershed saves the cost of construction of cross-drainage works. Contour Canal It is a canal aligned nearly parallel to the contours of the area. In the hilly areas it is not possible to align the canal on the watershed, the watershed on the top of the hill may be very high and the areas which need irrigation may be in the valley. Then contour canals are used. Contour chosen for the canal should be selected in such a way that it includes all cultivatable areas of the valley on one side of the canal. Contour canal can irrigate only on one side, since the ground level on the other side is quite high and no bank is required on that side. Such type of contour canals with one bank only is known as single bank canal. When both banks are provided, then it is known as double bank canal. Side slope canal. A side slope canal is that which is aligned at right angles to the contours, that is along the side slopes. These type of canal runs parallel to the natural drainage flow. They usually does not intercept drainage channels. Hence helps in avoiding the construction of cross drainage structures. General considerations for canal alignment. The alignment of canal should be such as to ensure the most economical way of distributing the water to the land. As high command area as possible. Minimum number of cross drainage works. The length of main canal from the point where it takes off from a river to a point where it mounts on a watershed should be minimum. The alignment should avoid roads, cart tracks, places of worship and other valuable properties. The alignment should pass through the balanced depth of cutting. If not, it should involve minimum depth of cutting or minimum height of filling. The number of kinks and acute curves should be minimum. Idle length of canal should be minimum and branches should be economically planned. The alignment should not be made in a crack strata. Cross section of canal. The figure below shows the typical cross section of an irrigation canal, based on the full supply level of the canal and natural surface level, canals can be of three types. When the natural surface level is above the top of the bank, the entire canal section will have to be in cutting and it shall be called canal in cutting. Similarly, when the natural surface level is lower than the bed level of the canal, the entire canal section will have to be built in filling and it is called canal in filling. The section shown in the figure is partly in cutting and partly in filling and aims in balancing the quantity of earthwork in excavation with that in filling. In the above figure, Natural surface level is in between canal bed level and top level of bank. Components of canal cross section. The figure shows various components of canal cross section. Side slope. The side slopes should be such that they are stable, depending upon the type of the soil. A comparatively steeper slope can be provided in cutting rather than in filling, as the soil in the former case shall be more stable. Berm. Berm is the horizontal distance left at ground level between the toe of the bank and the top edge of cutting. They give additional strength to the banks and provide protection against erosion and breaches. They protect the banks from erosion due to wave action and provide a scope for future widening of the canal. Figure shows the freeboard and bank of a canal. Freeboard The margin between full supply level and bank level is known as freeboard. The amount of freeboard depends upon the discharge of the channel. Bank The primary purpose of banks is to retain water. This can be used as means of communication and as inspection paths. Service road Service roads are provided on canals for inspection purposes, and may simultaneously serve as the means of communication in remote areas. Dowla as a measure of safety in driving dowless with side slopes of 1.5 is to 1 to 2 is to 1, are provided along the banks. Spoil bank. 
when the earthwork in excavation exceeds earthworks in filling, the extra earth has to be disposed of economically. Economical mode of its disposal may be collecting the soil on the edge of the bank embankment itself. Borrow pit. When earthwork in filling exceeds the earthwork in excavation, the earth has to be brought from somewhere. The pits, which are dug for bringing earth, are known as borrow pits. If such pits are excavated outside the channel, they are known as external borrow pits, and if they are excavated somewhere within the channel, they are known as internal borrow pits. Internal borrow pits are more preferred than external one. The internal borrow pit may be located at the center of canal. The idea behind this is that, the borrow pits will act as water pockets where the silt will be deposited and ultimately the canal bed will get leveled up. Thank you for watching.